and welcome to Joseph's Model Railway and Toy Room. Thank you so much, as always, for joining me. I just put the videos out there where I can, so you don't need to panic about subscribing or liking or any of that. I'm just putting them up there to have a bit of fun and um, a little bit of an archival footage that I can go back with future generations and see what did I really do in my existence? Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's not beat about the bush. I wasn't actually gonna make a video about what we're doing today. And I thought, well, we need to start breaking them up. And as I've discussed before, I've got so many projects on the hop at the moment in various different states, again, waiting on different deliveries and things. And then as I'm noodling away, starting to commence a separate section, I thought, may as well make a video about it because it might well be applicable since it's something that is highly customizable and can be adapted to perhaps something you might be doing on your layout. Scalemodelscenery.co.uk And in this particular instance, we have the LX291 00 scale um, harbour or quayside steps. Um, and it comes in a pack of two. So you could have one on this side and one on that side, which is exactly what we're gonna be doing with our curved viaduct at the moment. Now, I've been busy working on textures with the sand and that for this coastal area, but I really wanted to get these stairs in place before we do too much else because I need a reference point. And as I as I mentioned, I have, did sort of start this before thinking about the video. I did need to take a knife and start hacking away to make sure this was going to work. But let's take a look now. Once again, pretty clean, simple instructions. Really all you're going to need is basically a sharp knife. Um, I even, I don't have much luck with those scalpels to tell you the truth. I actually just prefer using just your standard type of blade that you use for um, unpacking boxes and things like that. I always have one in my pocket. I'm certainly not trying to be a criminal carrying a weapon, but the amount of times I go in and I'm setting up uh, new uh, hardware or computer equipment, stuff like that, and you always need a blade to cut through boxes and get things open. So I have plenty of these and we will carry on. Now, um, and some glue, PVA glue is generally all you need. And then again, it's up to you what you're gonna do to paint it and carry on with that. But for the minute, let's just carry on with it. So as I said, um, I've prepped it up. Let's get in a bit closer and really get an understanding of what we're doing. We'll keep it pretty quick today. Um, I'm not going to do too much. There's not a lot we really need to do. So it's pretty much, here's where we're gonna start. And shortly you're gonna see where we've ended up. Um, but just a few little things along the way, because obviously the stair kit I've got are too high for what I've got. So a few little modifications where I think perhaps you might be able to take something away from this. Let's dive on in. But just briefly to fill you in, if you're wondering what I've been up to to get it looking like this before we start pouring and getting it all happening, so there's a bit of a clean out, I just took three standard sort of acrylic paints here. I took a blue mist, an aqua, and a, an ultramarine to sort of indicate where the channels are sort of going to go and the shallow water will be. Again, we're going to clean it, soften it up, but I think it'll just give it a nice bit of a depth. I'm also going to add a little bit of turquoise woodland scenics uh, to the... Um, pour on this with the realistic water. Now again, at the other end, we are gonna be using the deep pour murky water, so a slightly different product from Woodland Scenics, but we're uh, it's basically achieving the same results. But for what I've played with on this, I've found so many more uses for this that we're gonna talk about in future videos, uh, especially where you add a little bit of puddles and details to things that can take a, a average layout to a step higher, and all you need is just apply a bit of that with a brush. No maintenance, no problems. Come back to that in another video. All right, so we've had to um, hack it out. So we're gonna obviously have a stairway here. Now, I just wanna point this out really quickly. The kit that um, has arrived for me was packed by Claire, spelt with the K, that's the traditional spelling. Uh, any more than if you know the traditional spelling of brandy, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, now, the important thing about this, uh, it's just a few little things we're gonna glue together, and as always, the instructions are exceptionally simple. It's very logical, you won't go wrong, and if you're anything like me, I'm usually just looking at a picture cross-referencing, and it's all the instructions I need. But the first thing is, um, when it came in, you can see what I've done here. I've obviously had to cut it down, so to speak. It was um, a bit too high. Um, so if we bring this step in, this is the one for the right. It's going to sit somewhere about here. I've still got to hack this bit out here. But just to get a height idea, this is about right. Remembering there'll be a little top level, and that's going to bring us not far off to where we need to be. Generally on steps like this and going down rock walls and that, you usually have to take a couple of steps up to go down. I know, it seems ridiculous, but... There is logic in that, of course. 
So to achieve that, it seems simple enough. All I did was take a saw and um, go down to the steps I need and take the cut I needed. Now, that is exactly uh, what we did do. Um, but there is an extra step you do need to be aware of. So this will be the top piece that needs to sit across the top here. So uh, a couple of ways to do this. You could just take your cut out from the bottom. Um, but the logical thing for me is to take it out from the top. Now, that's not a problem. So here is what we would have had as the original one. So when I took the cut and nipped this top of the stairs away, you just have to remember to take that measurement of the top piece of whatever it was, which is quite simple because you literally just cut it off and just make sure you're going to bring it back to get the measurement for where you need to cut this excess off because I don't need a huge landing on the top here. So we're gonna take it off and of course, then when we come in with the piece we need, which comes and sits on the end, everything will be good in the world. And of course our step. So again, we'll have our steps, which again, have got the groove, which are quite clear. We just need to start gluing them together. And then we've got the landing sitting at the top and it's gonna look quite good, I believe. Now, the next thing is they do make mention of tidying up the edges of the uh, thing what you need and, and painting appropriately where I am in their situation You can see they've done the stairs in the one color and then the side and then they talk about what you could do now I have an excess amount of this textured gray brick I don't know if we can see that even if I get in nice and close for you on that you hopefully be able to notice that it's not just a flat piece of paper. We've got the nice ridges on it. And I thought that might not be too bad. We don't need much. The whole idea is we're, we're literally gonna be covering a section up. So we've done our cut and uh, what we're gonna do, we'll cut one out, get that template, cut the second one off. We'll lay them on, glue it all together and then see how we go. But just like our canal wall, all the steps are gonna have to be glued uh, together. Um, so it's going to be three sets of stairs and then on every fourth one we've got the ones with the two holes and the whole idea with those two holes is where we're going to need to notch out our railings uh, for this. So a bit of gluing and a bit, a bit of mucking around but we'll just take our time and get on with this one. Good day to you once again as we left those stairs to dry and I've just done a little bit of excavation here so we've got somewhere for them to sit them in. I don't think that's too bad of a height. I think uh, a bigger concern would be stepping off and uh, not looking both ways before you walk onto the rail. But uh, I think just to create this sort of backdrop scene, um, I think it's just a little bit nicer than what we had. So we'll keep working with it. The same thing on the other side. I had to do a bit of excavation. I recall there was a bit of a divot here for some reason when I was cutting it out or building it. I'm not sure. I think we'll just put a bit of shrubbery down there. That'll disappear. But again, um, you can see where I've hacked out a bit with the land just to make it fit reasonably straight because this one sort of bends back around again. The stairs are sort of trailing down but we're not going to lose much sleep on that because um we'll do something don't panic about that of course now the next thing is we need to start sorting out the handrails so let's get on with that <laughs> start oh okay wait what are these paw prints oh yes it's easter Looks like we've had a visit from the Easter Bunny. Well, let's follow these paw prints. Hmm. They seem to go on for a bit, but we just need to get over here. Yes, it is Easter time, and I've just come out into the sunshine for a moment, um, and thought, well, here we are. Now, I don't like to string things up and get complicated when it comes to painting, but with these handrails, I thought we'd better do something. So I've popped them up and I thought what we might do is lay a bit of a primer down. Now I know this one is just for um, plastic and uh, metal, but I've had reasonable success just putting a light coat over this uh, MDF type of stuff and the results have been fine. So we're gonna give it a light dusting of that and then we're gonna do these handrails in that. Now for the secret ingredient. 
And here it is. No, not that carrot. Uh, this is basically a galvanized spray. This one's called Zincit. They're obviously different ones. What's interesting is I use this in my daily uh, life uh, quite a bit in bits and pieces I need to do when doing uh, outdoor antennas and things like that. And why I'm pointing this out is I just noticed that in a uh, recent video uh, I was watching and um, recent model railway video and they were using it to do their um, signal gantries and overhead gantries on an electric railway. But it got me thinking because the color it's producing is basically what we want, that kind of galvanized steel or what have you that we use in the application. And I thought that's just wonderful. We're going to talk more about that as I'm constructing our overhead refueling point. But in the meantime, the reason I'm pointing it out is I think we're going to use it. We will do the uh, handrails and everything using our uh, mica silver from Tamiya, but I thought we'd first lay down a bit of a base layer uh, on the steps using this type of uh, galvanized spray just to give that darker appearance to it. So uh, because it's on MDF uh, as opposed to a plastic, it'll sort of bleed in and just give a nice sort of a shade of gray, I believe. And then we'll come along and we'll put that stone work on top. So let's see what we can do. Now, as mentioned, so this is basically almost a primer or a base coat we'll use here. Again, on the stairs here, we're not. We're going to spray the zincet straight onto it and just let it breathe in as needed. doesn't matter where it goes because we're going to cover this section. Now, let me just show you how hot it actually is today. What's great about this particular galve spray is it's a consumable I use all the time. As you can see, that grey is not too bad there. Why I'm showing it to you like this is that the speed in which it is drying is just how hot it is at the moment. Of course, where it looks a bit wet and glossy is obviously just a bit of bleed from where our PVA is. And once again, I really don't think that's a bad thing because it gives that sort of appearance of where you would see a few droplets that are built up after a morning shower. Now, we come back over here where we've laid our primer down. We can uh, commence straight away painting. It's just that hot today, so we will carry on. Sorry I didn't bring a tripod. We'll just have to keep doing it the old-fashioned way. Right, we also have this wonderful westerly wind pick up at the moment, which is just completely aiding it. Now, 60 seconds since I put that spray down of silver, and look, that's actually quite reasonable. I would have no problems at all using any of that. But we will put a second coat on. That's mostly just there to give it a bit of uh, extra protection. Um, and depending on the delicacy of some of those areas, I'll even put a clear coat over the top just to protect it, make it easier to dust. I'll see how we go with this one with the final piece. But uh, one more coat, we'll head back inside and start gluing it together. Here we are, and it's also where we're going to uh, conclude the video at this point, but we can bring you in nice and close. Uh, of course, they're not perfect. We're still going to add some, some uh, sand at the lower levels and uh, clean up a few little spots on the puddles and detail them uh, a little more as we go along. But at least it gives you an idea of what we've constructed here and a few little quick, cheap techniques I've used to get away with it. Now, I think you'll agree that once that glue dried, the texture was quite, uh, quite good. Uh, if we actually bring it in nice and close to the camera, you can see that textured brick that I'm talking about, or stonework if you like, um, and, and vice versa on the second one here. Um, as you saw me cut out the little uh, bibbles there, obviously I've made a little stuff up with the rail here where it was supposed to be three apart, uh, and vice versa, I stuffed it up uh, down here at the bottom. So there's two steps instead of three, and on this one, it's at the top. But they're just little bits that make the scene a little more interesting, I suspect. Um, and as you can see, um, if we just slot them into place at the moment, 
but I don't think that looks all that bad. Of course, we're gonna come in and, and clean these uh, joins up accordingly. Bit of sand across the bottom, a little bit of greenery here. But most importantly, just in a previous video, I was talking to you about my frustration, and particularly with Pico, about the statement double O and HO. I don't appreciate people um, using that statement. This is a HO bridge, and this is a double O uh, staircase system that we've done here. And as you can see how dramatic the rails look, um, I'm really not a big fan of it. For me, as I've said from the get-go, I'm more than happy to carry on in this fashion because I just want to see a sort of a bit of a finished project. And it's a, most people that will see this layout probably have no real interest in model railway at all. So it's just a welcome sort of step into my mind and a little world that I wouldn't mind living in. But I think we're going to carry on here. I think we've done quite well. And as you could see, in just in that last bit of footage, I did just cut up some spare sheets and all I've done is just um, glue that on the back here. So we'll make that look pretty when we come and finish up the scene. There's still a lot more to do here, um, as you're going to see what I've done to get to where I am in another video, any more than we do have our next um, kit that's come in as well from Scale Model Scenery, and uh, we'll put together our little uh, life rings, life buoys, cabinets, whatever you like to call them, um, but we're obviously going to need to place a couple in some key areas. We obviously still need to finish up where and what happens here, I am 100% aware of the danger of climbing to the top and not looking both ways and stepping onto the tracks. Again, um, this isn't the end of the world. It's a model, and I think it's just going to be something. I'm not. I'm still not sure what we're going to do across the top other than just ballasting. We'll probably keep it as stonework. There's this nice little footpath up here, um, as you can see on the back there. We'll just try and keep it as neutral as we can without overcomplicating the scene. I mean, once there's a bit of water there, that's a lovely feature. The train comes across and carries on. The functionality is the back line and it's just returning. So we're just trying to create a little bit of interest here. And we're gonna do a bit of detail down here. So the eye is gonna really be drawn down into here as opposed to the anomalies. But I think we're gonna have quite a bit of fun. I'm going to talk a bit about base colors coming up in a future video about what I've been using in respect to the brown and the gray. Just for note at the moment, this particular one is a Taubman's paint that we have available here uh, in Australia at the uh, local hardware store that most of you in Australia will be well aware of. Uh, the color is wizard gray. It's also the gray I'm going to use for painting down in the road section of our petroleum depot down there. And as mentioned, of course, I have been using the Woodland Scenics road coat system, of course, where you obviously have your concrete here. And then of course we have the asphalt. And in some instances, as I had on the main road, I did blend these two together to get a bit more of an appearance I'm looking for. Now that's all quite good, but it does put more of a skin across the top. And that can be a bit problematic in what I'm about to do in the next thing. So a paint is a little more tolerant. And that's why we're going to use that. We are going to talk about the browns and the olive greens and things like that in another video on what we're doing with the landscaping. Well, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, as always, thank you so much for joining me today. We've got a bit more of a in-depth video coming up regarding models, as in building kit models and different things. And the only reason that was actually ready to go by Christmas, 99% all finished, except for two lamp posts which we're waiting for that need to just complete that scene appropriately and away we go in the meantime though i think it's a welcome little distraction and you can see a little bit of progress happening i have been shooting a master video that's uh detailing what we're doing and to do with the pour and everything that's going to happen so we'll see that but i think this is just a, a nice way because i originally had no idea how this was going to connect up and while there's a bit of a scale size difference between HO and double O, I think we're going to get away with it. We'll tidy it up again with a little bit of greenery and a little bit of filling in as we go along. And at the moment, I'm quite enjoying the modular movement of how this works. Again, there's another video that's happening beside me, which is again about to be revealed about modular landscaping and options that are available that I will prefer to use on this type of layout. But as always, thank you so much for joining me. Look forward to seeing you next one. Stay safe. Toodles.